Welcome back to the SR Challenge Beginner's Guide. In the last episode, we covered the server uh, selection and we also covered the character class for Matthew and choosing those questions absolutely paramount. And now we are actually going to be continuing on to chapter two in this episode. So let's get to the next mission. So here, it's really cool. They'll tell you uh, the mission beforehand. So the recommended level, we're at level, well, our team is at level four. We're still at level two. It shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you get uh, different items. You can click on them to get information. And it tells you the stamina that's going to cost. So it's going to cost us 10 stamina, which we have in the top right corner. Let's do it. Again, we're going to skip story. I'm sorry. If you're interested in the story, please play the game. Story. Okay. Here, these demons seem to shy away from my holy cross. Again, we're still very much in the tutorial, so you're gonna see a lot of the units being used uh, directed by the game. It'll open up in a minute. So as you can see here in the right hand corner, you have your normal, again, unlocks, oh, that's kind of nice, it tells you. It unlocks when you reach level five in your team, as well as uh, changing the animation at level 10 for the team. So again, we're getting there. It's just gonna take some time. All right, I don't know what they wanted us to do, but let's just click buttons. Again, this, this stuff is super easy early on. You should not, you should not fail. All right, we'll leave it to you. You got this. So he's gonna guard. Nice that they talk about it. Could have used it in the last episode, right? So he's talking about his guard skill here, which allows him to take damage for allies within two spaces. I'm used to Lance failings. I've I thought this was actually heavy shield. So we're gonna click that, and he uses guard. So now he's able to guard for anything in two range of himself, which allows him to guard for that unit there. And since he's effective against cavalry, takes out these wolves like nobody's business. I don't know if you saw that audio or the glitch there, but hopefully not. Okay. Do you need help? So now, if we look back at our class thing here. We notice that holy beats out demons, and these these monsters, they're just nothing but slimy, slimy demons. And here we have our very clean holy Almeida, so we're going to pop her over here, and instead of attacking, or instead of healing, we're going to attack. We're going to attack its weak point for massive damage. Crab battle. <sighs> that is it. Over and done. And that was an extremely easy victory. Again, you get experience. Early on, it levels up your characters very quickly. You'll find out later, it does not. So here we get to see an example. So we get to level five and our team stamina has gained by 10. So we actually gained back the stamina that we spent, which is kind of cool. So they're gonna be talking about the fork in the roads. Um, let's skip this real quick. So with the uh, with the, how this game works is there's a path direction to the story, but there are branching paths that lead to other more encounters on the map, which lead from just normal uh, random encounters of monsters on a field or enemy troops on a field that you'll have to take out and you get rewards for it, basic stuff. But then there's boss events that you can do. So you go through and you fight the boss and you get massive rewards, but they're generally much harder than the normal encounters that you'll find. Uh, through that, you can get lots of different things. I don't know why it says 30. Th this 30 Trinity vouchers, do not expect that much. If you get one, be happy. One is a lot. All right, I'm sorry about that. I had to take a little quick break, but we're back. So. Here we have two events on the map. Um, let's actually discuss a few things before we jump into the next event. So stamina here can be recharged by two ways. You can recharge your stamina by using burgers at a 50, I don't know how they become bread. What do you just take the buns off the burger and throw away all the other good stuff? Like that's that's why you eat the burger. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. It should go the other way. You should make bread into your burger, not burger into your, yeah. 
or you can spend 40 Trinity Crystals, which um, it's up to you. A lot of people early on uh, say it's actually quite beneficial, just because stamina is a little hard to come by. As you play through the game, you'll eventually acquire more. But uh, 40, 40 Crystals isn't too bad, because you can generally get 30 within um, doing your dailies, and then as well, you can get a little bit more through other means. So 40 isn't too bad. 60 kind of is the threshold of, like, you could do it to get another 120 stamina if you really want to, if you're really trying to power through the game. But me personally, this game is not really made to be powered through. You really do want to just take your time and go through the game. And very much the game uh, encourages that. So every time you buy stamina, it goes up. So for the burgers, it always stays at 1. So every 1 you get 50. But to get 120, the first one is 40. The next one, if you want to do it again, is 60. And then it increases from there. I think it goes to like 80, 100, or something like that. I've never gone past 40, actually. I've only done 40 a couple of times. Uh, so, as far as stamina is concerned, you can go a little bit, but I would never go past 60. 60. Even people that have played this game extensively say, past 60, you're just you're wasting your crystals. The game is designed to slow your roll a little bit, because they don't want you to just power through this. And there's a lot of mechanics put in that way. So take your time. Enjoy the game. There's a lot of cool stuff to do. There's actually a lot of stuff to do in this game. Let's hit up the events real quick. Um, again, we hit our next level. Always look for these red dots. They are the indicators for you. Here we have, we're going to get 50 Trinity Crystals. How nice is that? The game just rewards us. So each level that we reach, level 10, we'll get a weapon. We'll get a Mithril Sword and 50 more Crystals. And then it, as as we go, we'll get them. So we'll cover those as we go. Here is the next thing. And this is paramount when you're starting out the game. Because we're doing an SR challenge, the unit Sherry, one, let me just say, is a fantastic unit. She is free so long as you do the event. You have, you have 60 or you have 13 days. You have two weeks. Two weeks to get 60 points to earn the shards to summon Sherry. Sherry is a flyer unit and she can also branch into an assassin. She is fantastic. She's probably one of the best dragon flying units. She has a skill that allows her to kill a unit and act again and go and take down another unit or so like that. She is very, very good. Um, I highly recommend it. So, looking at this path of light, you want to go through and do uh, everything that you can. So now, you'll notice here that we have locked uh, days. Mission is not available yet. So on the first day, you have all these different things that you can do. So, a lot of cool things. You can reach level 5. Boom. You claim that, and what happens? You get your reward for it, and then a point is added to your total. So every points you get adds up to the total to get Sherry. Now we are going to go through and we are going to do this stuff. Um, the avatar frame is pretty nice. Um, this weapon, last night, is a great SR unit, or SSR equipment, but it will get phased out eventually down the line, but early on, very good weapon. Uh, you also get more Trinity Crystals, so again, you really want to focus on this, and a lot of this stuff is very easy to do. Clear Chapter 6, that's not hard. Complete time rift five, five times. Again, that's not very hard. You'll get through it very, very easily. There are gonna be some things that ask you to do things that maybe you're not interested in doing. Like maybe the game might ask you, hey, if you spend money on this object, that's fine. You don't have to do everything on this. You have to do uh, at least enough to get 60 points. And out of all the days, you have more than enough to be able to do this completely for free. So you don't have to spend a penny. But if you're interested, it does help out so you don't have to do every single thing. Um, some of the things you might want to watch out for, like this one is really good. One for one, we can summon a unit and we can get a free Trinity Voucher. So we'll cover that in a moment. Adding friends, completing gyms, go to the arena. So again, Keep your eye out on this. Make sure you're updating and doing different tasks. You have two weeks, which is plenty of time. I think when I started my account, I only had like four or five days and it was tight, but I was able to pull it off. So two weeks is more than enough time to get through this content. Again, check your, your missions. 
Here we haven't done any of this stuff, which we can do in this video. And then we reach level five, so we get a reward. It's pretty nice. This game is very generous, especially, especially early on. You get lots of free stuff. Um, let's cover the stuff down here real quick. So we have our heroes tab, and this is our three heroes that we have so far. We have Matthew, Grenier, and Almeida. They are uh, decent units. We should look at the rating. Let's look at the rating. Where are we? Oh, uh, we haven't. We haven't. I, I was curious to see what my level three Almeida was stacking up against. So let's just cover the stuff. They're going to cover it here down the line. Here's your stats. Um, the different rankings, you have A ranks, it goes up to S rank, which is by far the strongest in that stat. Uh, D is, I think, the lowest that you can have. B is pretty good, C is average. Um, round there, B, B and C are pretty average. I would say actually B is average, B is average. C is on the low side. So looking here, Matthew is very good at attacking and having good HP, but otherwise he's pretty mediocre on the rest of the stats. You can check out his talent here, you can read through that. Here you have your skills, which you are able to swap out skills for different things. Pretty self-explanatory. You have your star ranks, which increase as you increase your stars. We'll cover that when we start doing summoning and whatnot. Here you have your classes. Once you unlock your time rifts, you can go and farm these different things so you can start upgrading your characters, make them stronger. Next, you have your troops. Lots and lots of troops in this game. We'll cover those once we get to that point, but lots of that. Equipment will be completed in the next chapter, which we're going to cover on the screen. Uh, okay, here so. Oh, and I forgot one thing. You have your upgrade class. So we can actually look at the class for Matthew. So Matthew here, for me, because I chose those very, very important questions, I can upgrade into the fighter and branch out from there. So every character has a branching path. Most characters have at least two uh, tier three classes is what we call them, which allows you to get tier three units and basically be at the strongest at point that you can be. And almost all units, except for maybe like one, I think Juggler is the only one that has all tier three classes, has at least a one tier two class. Now these tier two classes shouldn't be relied on as far as keeping your character at that uh, class. So you, sh you should never recommend somebody to take on Dragon Knight when you have Hero or Shadow, which of course we're gonna choose Shadow. Why would you not choose Shadow? Shadow Ages, Shadow Realm, Shadow Matthew. Um, so the benefit though is that you're able to get different class masteries. As you master each class, you're able to get bonus stats that are permanently added to the character. So the benefit of, let's say we'll scroll here to the Knight, the Dragon Knight class, you'll get a permanent stat increase of 48 and skill increase of eight. So if that is viable and in, uh, good for you, absolutely you should take that as well as you'll get uh, you signature moves. So Wind Whisper would be able to pick that up. And then as well, we'd have uh, exclusive tier two classes. Again, really your main goal for ever going into these type of classes is really picking up the skill and possibly further down, getting the key stat permanently bonus to you. Most people stick with just uh, utilizing either one or two of the tier three classes and then calling it a day. The skill really is the kind of incentive. We'll cover once we get into the rune stones, the rarity and uh, how much you want to actually be spending on those. Next we have uh, Grenier. We'll cover him real quick. He is, uh, as you can see, very attack oriented and defense oriented. His skill is not the greatest, but again, you can cover that when you go. And then he has a guard skill, simple, normal stuff. And then we have Almeida. She's a healer. Um, Partially, she also does lots of debuffing and restores units across the field, which is actually fantastic. So she is not bad. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna use some of these experience potions. So we're gonna we're gonna use. A, I don't want to waste any. So what we do here is we'll give a couple to Almeida. We'll give you guys silver ones. Yeah, it's fine. So, pretty simple. All right, so we got them maxed out in level. Our team level is five, but we're able to get them to level six. So, we have two options now. I know we took a while, but here we are. We have two options. We can get the chest, which I actually recommend just doing that first because it encounters no 
uh, no fight or anything. It's just a free item. So, got more experience. And let's go ahead and take on this map right here. So, we're going to get 15 crystal, uh, Trinity Crystals and a uh, experience potion. Silver for 400. Nice. This map is going to cost us 20 uh, stamina, which we have more than enough for that. Okay, and as this is uh, pretty simple, even for boss ma uh, maps, even though they're a little bit more difficult, it's pretty much straightforward, so you can just run in, do your fights. Uh, for this fight, it's just two demon jellies, so we're going to take out two demon jellies. Now that we're at level 5, we're actually able to change the animation speed. A lot of people, uh, oh, actually exclusively from what I've seen, choose the speed up command. We've been watching at a half speed. We're going to use the uh, double speed. I actually prefer in my account to use half speed when I'm not grouping up with others. But there we go. As you can see, the animation is significantly faster, and it gets through this combat even, even quicker. Again, this stuff pretty easy. Just because we use those experience potions that we got, take them down no problem. Leave it to me. Oh, right forgot. I forget every time I do this map. I'm like, oh, right, we're done. No, the boss is up here. Here's a good example of checking. So, as you can see, uh, okay, yes, yes, you're talking. It's split into two. Time to go. On the bottom left here, you're able to see danger zone. When you click on that, the danger zone will appear. Key point, if you don't think there's any enemies, click on the danger zone. If anything shows up in red, there's a potential chance there's an enemy there. Just saying. Uh, this banter icon, you can turn it on. You can send uh, comments and whatnot, um, which will scroll across the screen for anybody who has banter turned on. This is an old mechanic when the first when the game originally started, and it was permanently on. We had no way of turning it off, and people were constantly sending messages. It's not something people like. Most people have it turned off. I don't even think anybody has this turned on. Also, you have your chat feature here. This is the world that I'm in, um, so you're able to chat in the world. These people are talking about saying hello. You're also able to check out everybody who summoned things, so very happy for them. You got your team, so if you team up with anybody, you're able to chat in your own little group there. You also actually have groups. You can make a group and chat with that specific group of people if they're online. They'll, uh, they'll jump in and chat. Private message certain people. And then you have your guild, which you have to be a part of a guild first. All right, so we're gonna keep moving forward. Time to go. I apologize if you're hearing clicking. Leave it to me. That's just how my mouse works. Take this. So pretty straightforward. Uh, these early missions don't cause much of a problem. Again, if you lose on these missions, just try it again. They're they're so painfully easy to get through. Leave it to me. I will say though that I. I'm probably going to run into a second encounter. Yeah, he's going to summon again. Sometimes you're able to get through them if you, you remember, unlike me. They're up there. Okay, again, since this is a demon creature, we are going to use Almeida because she's holy, and she's got holy warriors, and they're going to wholly petrify half their army. Okay. Well, that worked. And the cool thing about Almeida is that she's able to provide a debuff because of her talent. So if she's in range of a unit, she can debuff them. Uh, we're actually going to tactfully move Grenier up. Nice. I actually did more damage than I was thinking. All right, look at that. Victory. Simple. Pretty easy. They get much challenging. More challenging as the time goes on. All right, thanks for the crystals. Here we go. Okay. So on the next episode, we are going to get to the Kal Kalzath. I think that's how you pronounce it. Kalzath? Kalzath? I'm going to go with Kalzath Forest. So on the next episode, we're going to check out, we're going to get to Chapter 2 of the Kalzath Forest and uh, figure out what's next on our mission. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.